And here is the beta that sat more than 15 years in a storage facility in Chicago. I'm bringing back to life. It had a bunch of broken spokes in the rear wheel and I still haven't got it running, but I'm confident it will run. It's kind of difficult to clean really nasty gasoline goo out of the fuel tank on these because the gas tank is the chassis. Uh, the carburetor I have to meticulously clean. Here's the wheel after I respoked it. Lucky me, the guy had bought the spokes many years ago. He just never put them on. So, of course, it has rock hard tires. 97 Beta Techno. It's important to check your air filter periodically because they can deteriorate over time. I've got this very well mangled 97 Beta Techno rear fender mudguard. It was really bad. I'm fixing it just kind of an experiment. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> anyway, here is an inner fender from an automobile. It's winter time here in Indiana, so people are crashing on the snow. You find car parts out on the highway. I saw this in the median, in the grassy median near my little town, and it laid there for days. So I stopped one day and picked it up. So it's the right kind of plastic, you know, it's, it's flexible, see? So this is, I have this die grinder, I have two of them. This is the one I use to cut plastic, and yeah, I wear eye protection. The shield is long ago broken off of this. So I'm cutting out pieces from this to fix this fender with the pop rivets, the Frankenstein rivet job. This one was really bad. You can see it was almost completely broken in half and these are getting difficult to find and I'm just playing with an old rat here fixing it up. But actually this this job will be very strong when I'm all done. I have a heat gun here and I can heat this up and then it's much more flexible. Okay now <laughs> I got it kind of in position. This is where you burn your fingers. As you can see here, I'm kind of bending it so that it'll lay down in here in this contour of this fender. And then I'll cut off this excess over here and get it just right. And you can see here I have it where it actually fits nicely right there. I decided to do this in two pieces because seriously this fender was almost broken in half so I dealt with that really bad side first yeah it looks really bad underneath <laughs> but hey it's a 24 year old motorcycle and I'm getting this rear mudguard to where it'll sit nicely on the bike again and be somewhat strong until the next person loops it out off of a big giant precipice okay I have it clamped and all positioned and I had used the heat gun to kind of mold it into position a little bit. Start drilling my first holes. The previous repair was a piece of tin under there and, and it was just not very well done. I mean he had the right idea. I guess none of this is really well done but it's a way to put the fender back on an old bike and make it usable for a minimum amount of an investment. So I'm going to drill through the original previous repair holes. Maybe add a few out on the edges of my patch underneath. Using this X-Acto scraper blade I clean the flash off of my drilled holes so that my rivet washers have a nice smooth fit to the plastic. See there. I 
I keep the clamp on during the drilling and riveting process. It keeps everything really tight. And the rear subframe wasn't bent, so lucky me. It's going to fit back on there just fairly nicely. And yes, I have a very ugly looking fender, but it's it's original shape now and it'll be strong until the next horrific crash. And I was using a 3 16th size rivet, half inch long, and standard aluminum 3 16ths, 5 millimeter rivet washers. Uh, aluminum rivets, of course. And there you have it. Apologies for just a crude, quick, homemade video. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Jim Snell best regards it's March the 3rd 2019 Indiana USA